I have been teaching on the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the latter days. Will it happen? Will the scripture come true that God promises us in James chapter 5 verse 7? For it tells us the Lord is patient and he will wait till he receives the early and the latter rain. Yes, it is true. The Bible teaches us very clearly that in the last days, the Lord is going to pour out his spirit on his sons and his handmaidens. And there's going to be signs and wonders in heaven coinciding with these amazing and incredible events. We will see God move yet before that great and notable day of the rapture. Yes, Jesus promises his church that they, he will take his bride out without spot or wrinkle. And God is about to make a move that will surprise this whole planet. I want to teach on the outpouring of the Holy Spirit today. But before I get into this message, I will ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. And I pray, O oh God, that the power of your Holy Spirit will move amongst the listeners today. Lord, I pray for them that are asleep who don't pay a whole lot of attention, that they will rise up, wake up, and warn their loved ones that you're soon coming back. Father, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for the word of God. And Father, I thank you that you have saved us and blessed us with eternal life through the power of the precious blood of the Lamb. I ask you to bless us today in Jesus' name. Amen. I have been teaching on the frustrations and the concerns that the Apostle Paul had with his people, the Jews. For he tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 1 to 3, that the Jews have a zeal for righteousness, but they are ignorant of the righteousness of God and go about to establish their own righteousness. Thus, in that, that manner, they do not submit themselves to the righteousness of God. And that is the problem with all religious people. They have a zeal for righteousness, but they are ignorant of the righteousness of God. They are ignorant of the righteousness that God demands a person for a person to have to enter into the kingdom of God. What is that righteousness? That righteousness has to be holy, pure, all the time, every day, regardless where you are. You cannot be righteous today and unrighteous tomorrow. Because if you are righteous today and unrighteous tomorrow and a train hits you and kills you, you go to the lake of fire. But the righteousness of God comes through being born again. Thus, a person is pure, holy, and righteous all the time and every day. So if he gets hit by a train, he has no problem. He doesn't have to repent. He is in heaven because he has been made righteous by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Very easy to understand and very clearly written. Yes, this is the righteousness that God demands, but a lot, most religious people are ignorant of the righteousness that God demands. This is why they go about to establish their own righteousness. But as we are drawing closer to the end, as the coming of the Lord draws nigh, the Lord will reveal himself. He will show who he is. And that will destroy the power of all religions. Yes, those who have turned to the Lord Jesus better get their heads up. For it is time to start 
teaching the soon coming of the Lord. Regardless what you have been teaching up till now, interject the soon coming of the Lord in whatever sermon you're preaching or whatever you are telling your loved ones. Tell them Jesus is about ready to come back. There is going to be a time in the very near future where there is going to be signs and wonders. It tells us in Acts chapter 2 verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Yes, this is what will happen in those last days. I know there are many churches today who have set themselves against the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they seem to think that those signs and wonders, healings and all that has gone out with the apostles. But if that's your thought, you have to believe that God is going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh in the latter days. He says there is a first rain and there is going to be a latter rain. So if that was your excuse up till now, that those things went out with the apostle, those things went out with the first rain, you have to believe, because the Bible clearly tells us that there is going to be a latter rain. There's going to be a later pouring out of the Holy Spirit. And that pouring out of the, of the Holy Spirit on all, on all flesh will come just before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So perk up, pick up your head and look around and start believing that God is going to do something incredibly very soon. And this is what will happen. This is what will coincide with, with the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. He tells us, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, this is what's going to happen. We will see that in the near future. I am reminded that Noah preached for a 120 years. He was a sign that God put up for the people to repent. And he preached that Jesus, that God will send an incredible rain that will cover the whole earth with a flood. The people did not believe. And only Noah and his family went into the ark. For you see, while he was preaching, he was also preparing an ark. And the last sign those people had were, was when all those animals went into the boat, marching two by two. Before Noah and his family went in, the animals went in. And there were lots of people watching. I can assure you they were already starting to wander. And this is what's happening now. God is starting to show signs and wonders. We can see earthquakes. We can see those terrible uh, uh, tornadoes and those terrible hurricanes that swept onto the coast of Florida. This world has never seen that where you have four hurricanes of such proportionate magnitude come upon a, a nation in a matter of a couple of weeks. This is horrible. And we're going to see Mount St. Helen explode again. And we're going to see terrorists 
do some horrific things yet. We can see those signs as the day is approaching. This is the wake-up call for God's people to get ready to look up for His return. He wants you to not to be asleep. For the Bible teaches us very clearly in Luke chapter 21 verse 36, Watch you therefore and pray always that you are accounted worthy to escape all those things that shall come to pass. If you are a Christian and you are living for the world, then you have to be careful for it. The Bible indicates that you should watch and pray that you're accounted worthy to escape all those things that shall come to pass. And the Lord Jesus Christ rem reminds us, remember Lot's wife. What did Lot's wife do? Even though she walked out of Sodom, she looked back on her possessions. She looked back at what she had back there in Sodom, and she turned into a pillar of salt. Yes, this is a warning to the people of God. Jesus is about to return, and we have to get ready for him. I want to speak to you today, those who don't know Jesus, those who don't know what I'm talking about here. If you have just tuned into this program, Jesus loves you. There is a day of judgment for everyone who has ever been born on this planet. And that spells your name. Yes, you will have to stand before the judge of the universe. And you will have to give an account of everything you did while you were alive on this planet. But if before you go there, the Bible teaches us we should make friends with the judge. We should bring our case to the judge before you get into court and talk it over with him. How? What does the Bible mean by that? These scriptures simply means this. The Lord Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago and he became a sacrifice for you and me. Yes, he was nailed on the cross and God's anger was poured out on him for all the world's sin. And the Bible teaches those who call upon his name shall be saved. Yes, God's anger was stopped towards me. He became, Jesus became my substitute. I will not have to pay the penalty and the price that God demanded. Jesus paid it for me. Now, instead of God seeing a sinner when he looks at me, he sees his son, Jesus Christ. And that can happen to you if you will turn to Jesus for your salvation. It is as close to your heart as your mouth is. All you have to do is believe within your heart that Jesus died and rose again for your sin and then confess it with your mouth because you believe it. Not just because you agree with it, but because you believe it wholeheartedly. You take it upon yourself that now Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Yes, this is what scripture is screaming out from every page. Jesus loves the creation that he created. He loves us. He loves us human beings. And he died on the cross for us. He is willing that none shall perish. So I'm asking you today, I'm pleading with you, tomorrow may be too late for you. Give Jesus your heart and he will give you eternal life. The Lord will bless you and make you a blessing. Amen. When one studies the end times in the four Gospels, the Lord Jesus Christ always reminds us when we see these things begin to come to pass. He seems to tell us that we will be able to see the things coming to pass. 
In Luke chapter 21, verse 26, it tells us, Men's hearts will fail them for fear and for looking after the things which are coming on the earth. So the Lord is making us very clear here that we will see, people will be able to see the things that he is predicting. With, with one flick of a television remote, we can see these things that Jesus prophesied coming to pass right in front of our eyes. We can see from the comforts of our own living rooms things happening all over the earth. And these days when one watches the news on television, it is a heart-wrenching thing sometimes because we can see the things that Jesus predicted fast coming into being. I will give you a few examples. The Lord Jesus Christ predicted that the weather will go out of control. He predicted there's going to be famines all over the world. He predicted that the morality of the human beings will become like as of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we can see that being uh, shown on, on television right in front of our eyes every day. I will give you a few examples. Where before have you heard of four hurricanes of such major proportion that we saw this year hitting the coasts of Florida? It devastated the homes of millions. People were put out of work and out of home for months. Many people were killed in on small islands. This is the devastation that Jesus talked about. When we look at the pestilences that are happening all over the world, Jesus predicted that they will come in the last days. Look at the scourge of AIDS. We can see AIDS destroying whole nations. And the Lord Jesus also made an interesting prediction that the human beings will be killed by the beasts of the earth. How many terribly, terrible diseases have come from animals and from birds that are killing the human race? We, we hear of West Nile virus that is sweeping through the land. And where does AIDS come from? It comes from monkeys. Very interesting when the Lord Jesus described these things. And we can see the terrible earthquakes that are happening all over the planet, killing not thousands, but hundreds of thousands in a matter of a minute. We can see Mount Helen is going to get ready to explode again. And one and one one watches that on TV, it seems like hell itself is opening its door and live fire is pouring out of those mountains. It is an incredible sight. And where before have you seen the terrible gross immorality of the human beings? We can see mothers, mothers who have children, get together in hundreds of thousands, pee, screaming at the top of their lungs that they want the right to kill their own children. They want the right. They are screaming for their rights to murder their own babies. We are definitely now reaching the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. And our governments are passing laws on same-sex marriages. And the individual provinces, the court systems are so eager to pass that law that they send out the documents even before the Supreme Court had judged on that resolution. Yes, this is the place where we are now, where Jesus says, when you see these things begin to come to pass, then lift up your head and look out for your redemption draweth nigh. Dear friend, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's time to raise from your sleep, if you are asleep. 
Let's forget the differences that have come into the churches and start warning the people about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever subject you are preaching in your church, interject the soon coming of Jesus so that people will start to realize that he is coming back. Tell them about the things that are happening. I do not believe there are too many people in the Western nations that don't realize that those things are happening and Jesus is about to come back. But tell them anyway. Let them know that this is what our Lord predicted. Get out of your comfort zone and tell people that the time of reckoning is just around the corner. Jesus is give, has given us these warnings and we better take them. For when he comes back, he will demand an answer from us when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible teaches us in the last chapter of Mark, he is telling us, go into all the world and preach this gospel. Yes, as we see the day of Jesus approaching, we should tell the peoples of this world of the hope that is within us. And that hope is in our Lord Jesus Christ. He alone is the anchor that God has given this earth to be anchored in. So turn to Jesus today. Tell people about the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will open your heart and your mind to this awesome truth and make you a blessing. Amen.